Okay, so I don't typically chime in on the fuck up you people call Christmas because one, I don't give a fuck, and two, unlike everyone else watching this as some sort of valuable entertainment, I pass out watching the same anime every fucking month and pray that my channel won't be gone when I gain consciousness. But hey, welcome to our first holiday special where I get to tell the story and cracks involved. This is gonna be amazing! And I'm your host tonight, Elucid. I'm Dino. Now can we get to the gifts? I'm talking, so why don't you get into shutting the fuck up? Because this is my job, I do the talking, okay? I will end you. Now am I qualified to make something on Christmas? Hell no. Which is why I have my friends here. But my point is, Friday's the spice of Christmas fuck up and my winter and holiday bullshit palette's full. And would you look at that, I've eaten up all I could. What else is on the menu? Get the fuck out or I'm calling the cops. Our first Christmas message here today is from a person known as Keemstar with a note that's labeled as clean shot. Anyways, Keemstar asks, Elucid, I'm a big fan of the show and I really want to know if you could show us the story of the night before BTS is. Please make this happen. Oh, what nice things to say. Well, it's your lucky day because I think it goes a little something like this. What's up everyone, I'm Elucid, and I have no will to live, but today I'm here for a different reason, not to gloss over my crack addiction this time, because today we're going to be discussing the most horrible- Amazing? Oh yeah, this past year I've seen some of the most nicest and thoughtful things anybody could have ever done for me. Really? Nah, I'm not going to lie to you and say that, I mean, allow me to just explain the amount of things this horrible year has put me through. Not to mention the dumb strike DLC that fucking came with it. But hey, we're here, right? I mean, let's be honest, who normally survives speedrunning every YouTube controversy in the span of a year? I mean, I guess I did, and at the end of the day, it begs the question. Did I ask for it? No, but I still don't care, because I live this shit 24-7, 365. Have you ever tried to make it on this platform about people hating you? It's not easy, okay? Yo, get to the story, goddamn. Okay, okay, let's get down to brass fucking tacks here. A long time ago, there was a man. Not just an ordinary man, it was a man with unique powers. For fuck's sakes, they don't have powers, and it wasn't just one man, there was like seven. Okay, fine. There was seven of them, okay? And then as sparks took to the sky, a fire rose up and a new challenger appeared. This isn't the script elucid. We don't have another character. Well, you better make one. Now. Five. Uh, four. Oh no. Um. Three. Okay, here we go. Two. One. There. Is it good? Fuck it, this will have to do. Hi, I'm Keed, and today I'm gonna discuss why K-pop stands are bad. And then, in the heat of his words, the heat of none other than hell itself, from the universe to the bikini bottom, the most intense sword battle took place between Keed and all of the K-pop stands. Now I know what you're thinking, okay? How did we get here? Well, to sum it up for you, you're basically in the Matrix right now. No, we're not. We're in a burning building. Shut up. No, we're not. Let's get back to the story before I end your fucking life. Now where was I? Keed fought them off with his bare hands covered in blood until they backed off to cower in fear due to his reflexes being so fast that not even Dream Speedrun could top off the speed given that it was, well, <laughs> fake. <coughs> but yeah, you, you get the point. And then Dino swooped in and, uh, shit, is that the fire alarm? I tried to tell you, but you didn't listen. We almost just died because of your story. Do you have anything to say for yourself? You ruined Christmas. Our second Christmas gift here today is from a person known as Alinity, explaining the mathematics of how far you can throw a cat. <sighs> I hate you all. All right, now I talked about the corpse stands, the dream stands, and I was about to talk about the K-pop stands for this video, but instead I decided not to. Because, let's be honest, the term stan in general is honestly a fuck up itself. I mean, the more we see people saying they're a stan of somebody, you consistently question, what is your sanity? Like, don't get me wrong, you can be a fan of somebody, but when you're saying you're a stan, there's a whole different meaning behind that word than just a fan. It's not a fan as you think. It's a fan in a toxic manner. And I feel like that the way that people use it in today's light is honestly not the way it should be used because you can't just change a word and expect it to have a whole different meaning. A word is made for its use in the beginning, it's made for its definition. If you strip that definition away, it's not the same word. Stands are, in general, the types of people that are bad. And since I don't want to generalize all of them and say they're all bad, I would just say a good percentage are. And if that's a good percentage and it's high, then I mean a lot of them are. And I'm not trying to say all stands are bad, I'm just saying you can't justify everything by saying you're a stan. You can't do bad things and say, hey, I'm a stan, it's fine. And if somebody like Dream tries to justify it by saying it's fine because they're stans, clearly something's wrong. 
I was a terror since the public school era. Bathroom passes, cutting classes, squeezing asses. You know, I think it's really funny how people who participate in stan culture don't want to admit that their entire community is based around a culture of toxicity. But the second you disagree with them, say something they don't like, they will jump to tell you to kill yourself. I'm not even joking. I made a really horrible joke tweet, okay? I will admit, this was some copy pasta I saw on my timeline, so I decided to tweet it too. And it got some attention, and a bunch of people from stan Twitter found that tweet and decided to tell me to kill myself. They didn't like a joke I made, so their first thought was to tell me to die. Now, because I'm mostly a mentally stable and sound human being this didn't affect me at all but i just find the irony insanely funny especially coming from the community of people that need a trigger warning just because of the fact that certain people exist on this planet omg trigger warning jay schlatt uh he made me angry one time grr you cannot sit here look me in the eyes and tell me that those type of people are mentally sound and not toxic they couldn't even come up with any real criticisms about the joke that i made so they just decided to tell me to kill myself oh well i didn't like this thing so you should kill yourself like uh, okay yeah that's 100 percent a completely normal and non-toxic thing to do the second that you can't find any valid criticisms of a person to just tell them to kill themselves yeah oh i'm sorry i forgot to put some tone indicators in there that was sarcasm anyways long story short stan culture is full of idiotic hypocrites who are scared of getting their feelings hurt by strangers on the internet Stands. More specifically, Minecraft YouTuber stands. If you were to tell me a year ago that Dream, a fast growing Minecraft YouTuber, would amass an audience so large that he would garner stands that grew by the daily and defended everything he did and said while endorsing other stands to go after people who dislike Dream, I would have laughed so fucking hard in your face. <laughs> But I digress. Stan culture in itself is more widely toxic than anyone could imagine. Especially this year and over on places like Twitter. Dream stands would literally jump to any fucking obstacle to defend Dream in every living second they have. It's unhealthy and disappointing in itself. I had also made a tweet that blew up by accident under the tag Tommy got his braces off. I have no idea why it's so remarkable to these 14 year old girls, but whatever. And oh boy were the replies a mixed bag. Many of the replies were upset with me whilst there were those trying to say I have no room to speak because I made a video about MLP and the brony fandom. Sorry Gen Z, but I'd rather be a brony any day of my life than a stan. I'm gonna hit you in the face with a baseball bat. Josh had also made probably the most base take on stand culture I've ever read. I recommend reading it for yourself if you wish to know what he said. And of course, Dream called him an idiot without contributing anything further with the argument. And recently, Dream had been called out cheating for his Minecraft speedrun with mathematical proof of it. And of course, Dream stands fucking denounce it and further fuel the fire by arguing with others who know differently. In conclusion, my final thoughts are stand culture is genuinely generally a toxic environment for all sides, whether that be an outsider like myself or an insider who indulges in the culture and the Minecraft YouTuber stand community itself. Thank you Elucid for inviting me on, it means a lot and it definitely preps me for my own video on the subject as well coming in the following months. Anyway, my name is Michael and I'm signing off. Also, dream gender exists. Way I act broke at the backbone of the trap so fans don't with the rap flows, get a crap load. Ammo like a castro when he had foes, that go like a gag yeah. Hi, I'm Bryson and happy holidays. I've been brought in today, I think, because my British accent makes me more sincere. But today I'm going to be talking about a particular K-pop stan on Twitter who is defending maps. Now, if you don't know what the map community is, first of all, good on you. I didn't know what it was either. And I think it's kind of disgusting that there's an entire community around this in general. But basically, the map community, or MAP, stands for Minor Attracted Person. But it's an entire group justifying the actions of these men right here. I can't believe we've got to the point in society society where there is communities that gather support like this. And as I was laying in bed on Twitter like I normally do most nights for hours on end because I have nothing better to do in my life, I stumbled across this tweet of a 17 year old K-pop stan talking about how her boyfriend is 11 years old. Now she was trying to justify this by saying it's okay because love is love and age is just a number. Then there's some hashtags like map rights, map pride, map positivity. They're trying to get map rights into the LGBTQ plus sort of like spectrum. That is disgusting. That makes the entire LGBTQ plus community look shit. And the fact that you are dating an 11 year old because love is love is absolutely disgusting. It's the fact that this post had thousands of likes, probably by the K-pop community. Supporting this, I think is terrible. 
And to put this into context, I watch quite a lot of golf, I play golf, and even if you don't play or watch golf, I'm sure you know who Tiger Woods is. Now this weekend, Tiger Woods and his son are playing in a father-son competition on the PGA Tour, and it's quite big because his son is actually very good for his age. His son is 11 years old. I'll show you a picture of him now. This is the sort of person this 17-year-old K-pop stan is dating. An innocent 11-year-old boy. Now obviously the comments were flooded with people saying this is disgusting. She posted a random K-pop star dancing for no reason at all with the caption, maps are valid and bisexuals aren't, whether you like it or not. In what fucking world does someone who likes men and women less valid than someone who likes fucking minors? This is totally disgusting to me and I can't believe this is even a real thing. Now I'm going to pass it off to the next person. Thank you very much for Lucid for letting me on the video. Hope you all have an incredible Christmas and peace. All right, so this video took ages to create. I mean, <laughs> It doesn't look like it's extreme editing, I know. It's I put as much time as I could into it. It took like a good while. But uh yeah, the amount of people, the scripting, that was that was pretty fun to make, I gotta admit. And uh thank you for the people who hopped on who worked a part of this and also thank you for all of the stuff that happened this year. Even though a lot of it was bad, I did actually enjoy myself along the way because I made some really good friends. Also, damn, I did not expect to get to even 12k this year, let alone even over 10k. I didn't even expect to get over 1k, honestly. I wasn't even doing that good. Like, personally, I don't think my uh, stuff is that awesome, but I'm glad that you guys seem to be enjoying it. Also, thank you for the people who hopped in this video. Thanks for everyone for watching this video, if you do. And, uh, yeah, that being said, 2021. Peace, peace.